All right, well, my name is P.L. Malcolm, and I'm here with Dave Foltz, uh, Legacy Band Director from Lakeland, Florida, Winter Haven specifically. And uh, we are fortunate to have Dave join us at our Hall of Fame. It's November 16, 2014, and we're here in Stetson. Dave, thanks for agreeing to sit down with us a little bit and share part of your story. Um, I guess we'll start off things with, why did you decide to be a band director, and what were maybe some of those circumstances? Well, before I knew I was going to be a band director, I, of course, was you know a member of my school band, and I, my first uh, band director was uh, Mrs. Schaefer. She started us in third grade. I had a chance to start in third grade band playing a trumpet, and uh, we had a band class twice a week. In a, in a really small rural school in northwest Pennsylvania. And Mrs. Schaefer would pull us out of class and, and give us a lesson and so forth, like so many students did at that time and, and still do in some of the northern schools. But, uh, you know, and I just really enjoyed playing, playing an instrument. And then I, my aunt gave me a saxophone, and, and I switched to the saxophone, and and just continued to play up through uh, the, the, the fifth grade. At that time, my family moved to Florida, and of course, I never had an opportunity to play in a school band. We didn't have school bands until you made it, until you were in the seventh grade, where I was originally went to school. So when I came to Florida I, in sixth grade, I could be in a band. So of course, you know, we signed up for band, and, and that was that was it. You know, now I'm playing with you know all these people. Before it was just a couple lessons. Occasionally we'd have a concert. You know, but now you know we got, every day we played in a band. So I just just went through uh, junior high school as a as a band member playing the saxophone and and got into high school. And uh, but as far as being a band director, that didn't happen until. Actually, my second year in college, entering because even even experiencing what I experienced in high school, and being in Jack Cruz band, you know, which is you know he's himself is, is a legend. Uh, I just love playing, but I went to college and and I was going to be an engineer, and and I but I still played in the band in college, and that was when I met uh, Charlie Cormby. Charlie Cormby was my first college band director, and. I think it happened, you know, at some some, and I started hanging out with all the music majors, and I wasn't hanging out with all the math majors or the engineer majors. And finally, my second year, I said, you know, this is kind of neat. I'm going to do this this music thing, and I switched my major to music ed, and uh, that's how I I got started. But the point I want to make is, I had these great teachers from my very first elementary music teacher, Mrs. Schaefer. And then my middle school and junior high director, and then having Jack Crew in high school, and then my first college director was uh, Charlie Cornby. I mean, I mean, I had, I had, I had the best early on, and I just thought they were just really, really good. I didn't know they would, they were legends at the time. We just, we just thought they were good, and we enjoyed being in their bands. But that's how, that's how I, and then, then the rest is. Is, uh, is history. I later went on, I transferred to uh, University of Florida. When I went to Florida, I was in uh, playing, that, by that time I had switched to trombone. I guess I need to go back here because when I was uh, at my second year in college, I was started out as a saxophone major and did that for one year. But uh, Charlie Cormie came to me and said, you know, we need some trombone player. And it was a small junior college band. He said, we need some trombone, would you, you know, because I'd had brass skills with them, and I really loved, right. and I played trumpet and and uh, and in high school in the orchestra and so forth. So I said, "Sure, man, I like that." And then I said, "I started playing the trombone. I really enjoyed that." And the uh, the assistant uh, director at at, uh, at Manatee Junior College, where I was going, was also the trombone teacher. And and he said, "I'll tell you what. I'll give you I'll give you free lessons if you play trombone in the band." <laughs> So he, I said, okay. So I did, and then I just, I, I just, I, after doing that for a semester, I said, I think I want to switch to trombone, and and I did, and I stayed on trombone uh, and transferred to the University of Florida, studied with Dick Bowles, and while I was at Florida, I got the chance to play in Gary Langford's jazz band and played in Frank Wick's symphonic band, and I just, I mean, if you look at the band directors I've had over the years, it's like, wow, you know. Yeah. You know, it's like you know, Jack is in the Hall of Fame. Charlie yeah. Cormie's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Dick Bowles is a role of distinction. distinction. 
uh, Gary Langford is this weekend going into a role of distinction. I mean, those are my band directors. So. And let's not forget your Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that, well, there's that too. <laughs> well, but I'm just a product of them. So I'm, your major influence is everybody, you know. Those, you, and, yeah. Well, the, I would, I'd have to say Jack Crew. I say Jack is, uh, you know, I didn't know what a band was supposed to sound like. This was at Riverview. This was at Riverview. He played <laughs> a recording of the Eastman Wind Ensemble. And I had never heard anything like that before. And I said, wow, man, that's really cool. I remember going to state when I was a senior year, and uh, Jack says, we need to go in and listen to this band. It was Chamberlain High School. Bob Price was the band director. They were playing the finale from the Shostakovich Fifth. And I sat there and listened to that, and I've never heard anything like that in my life, live. Because up until that time, I was just hearing recordings. You know, until I and 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 when I heard that high school band play live, I'd say, "Man, that's that's incredible." But uh, that that was I. He was he was the reason I I did what I did, and he always encouraged me. He said, "You know, he said, you know." When I told him, I said, "Well, you know, Jack, I'm thinking about because we stayed in, we were very close when I was going to school, and I wasn't a, a music major. We were still close. I played in the city band uh, out, you know, at at." Uh, even though I wasn't a music major, and, and Jack and his wife Shirley both played in it, so we, we were we were always in, in uh, close, very close. And he says, "You ought to think about that." And I said, "Sure, why not?" And I did. And that was that was how it, it got started. Well, that's a great story. You had some great people. Let me um, talk to you a little bit about when you started to teach. You know, where did you begin your teaching career? <laughs> well. That again, you know, you you talk, you hear about people who are in the right place at the right time. Well, I I I, I originally thought that I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, <laughs> because during my internship, I was about halfway through it, and I was interning in a in a little school outside of Gainesville, uh, Hawthorne High School, and my supervising teacher band director resigned about halfway through my internship. And I thought, well, this is, you know, I'm, I won't be able to finish. I won't be able to graduate. And, you know, I didn't know what, I didn't know what was going on. And uh, fortunately, uh, uh, the people at, at University of Florida, Dick Bowles in particular, they, they you know, they kind of came to my rescue and say, well, we're going to, we're, you've, you've been here for six weeks, you know, as an intern. Uh, the, now they don't have a band director, you know, we're going to let you continue on would you be the band director with the substitute sitting in the room? And I go, sure, you know, what better way to learn, <laughs> you know? So here we are two weeks before our marching MPA, two weeks, and uh, there was no show, there was no music, there wasn't anything. We had to learn a show wow. and put put together a show. So I had uh, people come out and ha help me, Frank Wicks, he, he, I remember him coming to me, and, and he was the band director of Florida, and he said, he said, well, why don't you, you know, we're getting ready to go to marching, um, back then it was just marching contest, it was still a contest then, it, was, it wasn't an MPA. He said, why don't you bring your band over to the University of Florida field and practice on Florida field? Wow. You know, and, and I said, can I, can I do that? He said, I'll set it up for you. You know, so here, you know, I'm still an, I'm just still an intern, I'm not a band director, I'm still an intern with substitute teacher, with us all the time and and the principal at the high school was very supportive etc anyway so we did that i got through my internship right at the end the principal came to me and said we're looking obviously we're looking for a band director would you like to stay on you know so i this was in the fall and i graduated on december 13th and i started teaching as the official band director on december 15th so I literally, you know, and I, and I initially thought, well, what a bad place to be at the wrong time because I'm in the middle of my internship. I lose my supervising teacher. But then it, it worked out where that was my first job, and I stayed there for another four years. Yeah. So my first job, I just kind of happened to be in the right place at the right time yeah. and, and stayed there for four years. That's an amazing story. <clears throat> That's great that you had help and support. Well, and again, I go back to, you know, the people that, that were, they, they just were very, very helpful. You know, the, the district chairman at the time was, was uh, Bill Stark, who was the band director at Williston, and he was helping out. And, uh, yet, you know, and they were just, they were just great. And the people of, uh, at the district, they, they knew the circumstances and they were all, you know, they just all were very helpful and got us through that first year. And then I, 
you know, we finished up the school year, and I went. I stayed there another three years before I, I, I left that position. Well, where did you go next? Well, I, my next position, uh, I, during that time, I was working at the band camp at Florida. Uh, the, it was called Gatorland. And this, this gentleman, and Jack was one of them. I still, of course, I still had my, my you know, connection with Jack Crew. He would come up every year and work with my band and, and just was so supportive and, and helped me in so many ways. Uh, Jack introduced me to a gentleman named Tom Bishop. And uh, yes, that's the same Tom Bishop that the award's named after. Tom Bishop was the uh, former band director at Lake Wales. He was now the music supervisor for Polk County. And he came to me in, in the summer and said, look, we need a band director and, and we have a couple positions available in, in Polk County. Would you be interested? And I said, well, you know, yeah, you know. Because I, Jack said, this is where you need to go if you want to be a band director. He said, this is, it's a really uh, good place to learn. And the school was Haines City High School. And they, uh, the program was very small. There was about 30 kids in the program. Uh, a couple years prior to that, the band was not very, very good. But it had, and Jack thought, and so did Tom Bishop, I mean, there's a lot of potential here. They can be a really, really good program. It's a band town. Uh, as a matter of fact, the very first president of FBA was the band director at Haines City High School, Major Ed Chenette. So it had a long uh, legacy of, of tradition there back going back to the 30s. But it had fallen on bad times. And so, so I went, took that position uh, with, with um, Tom Bishop as my, my mentor. And then, that, so now I went from, from, from Charlie Corman, Dick Bowles, Frank Wicks, Gary Langford, Jack Crew, now I'm Tom Bishop. Now I got Tom Bishop as my mentor, you know. And this guy, when I was at Haines City, he'd call me up and, and say, he wouldn't say, what are you doing tonight? Uh, you know, do you want to go to this rehearsal? He said, I'm going to come by and pick you up, and we're going to go to, to Lakeland's rehearsal and see Bill Miller rehearse or something like that. We, we were going to some band rehearsal, you know, and he just, that, that's, that's what he did. And uh, you didn't say, well, I don't want to go. You just said, okay, let's go. Okay. Yeah. So that's where I went. All right, so how long at Haines City? And four then years, four years mm -hmm. at Haines City, and then, uh, then I went to Winter Haven. Um, you know, and it was really tough leaving Haines City because that was a great place. I'll tell you, where those kids and parents were so supportive, and I, it was, uh, it was, it was a really good experience. And some of my fondest memories of teaching are at Haines City. I mean, the kids were great, the parents were great, and they understood. You know, I was going from a little little program in a, in a pretty smaller town into you know Winter Haven, which was a larger program. You know, they had over 250 kids in the the band. When I got to Haines City, there was about 30. When I left, there was about 125, 150, something wow. like that. So the, pr the program had grown, but it was that was about it. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, under and Tom Bishop said, you need to take that job. That's where you need to go. Yeah, grow. And growing. then at that time, a gentleman came into my band room at Haines City who I'd never met, and his name was Roy Wood, another Hall of Fame person, president of uh, former president of uh, FMEA, you know. And Roy Wood was was a legend, you know, and he came in and he he's the one that really talked me into going to to Winter Haven. He was a former band director of, at Winter Haven, and lived you know lived still lived in Winter Haven. Was very active in the community and so forth. And and I got to spend a lot of time with him in my band room. Mm -hmm. So you're you're seeing this pattern that yeah. I have that that. Well, I was never alone. I was never by myself in my band room, and, and I always had people around me that were really, really good. And at the same time, I was making friends with people my age, like Robbie Roadman, you know, who we, we, we actually, uh, when we first got out of school, we worked in Gainesville. We both worked in that area. And of course, you can't afford to live by yourself on a beginning teacher's salary, so we, we shared a house with another band director. If you can imagine three band directors living together, three high school band directors in the same house at the same time. And if, 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 you, if you have time for a story, I'll have to tell you the story about that. But anyway, but uh, you know, again, you know, I, was just, I just had all these people around me and we just kept doing these things that you had to do. At the time, I didn't think anything about it, but when I look back, well, that's why we were able to do what we were able to do because we did this. But at the yeah. time, we didn't do it for that reason. Yeah. We just did it because, you know, we we wanted to do that. For instance, 
you know, we spent a lot of time going to drum corps shows in the summer. You know, we, you know, that was back in the '70s and the '80s and the '90s when you, you know that was just starting to get at, strong, especially the in the '70s. So, you know, we just did the things that we wanted to do and that we enjoyed doing, and it just worked out that they were the things that made us good band directors. And then, uh, just to kind of finish this question about your career, you were at Winter Haven for how long, and then you went to Denison. Oh yes, well, uh, you know, I, I still had a that was just I was just halfway through my career. I was at Winter Haven for about twelve years, and then I, and then, and I really enjoyed that, and that's that's where I met people like P. L. Malcolm as interns, you know, and I had a I had a, a bunch of really good interns yes. that came through there, and I I learned so much from them, and. And like to think they learned a little bit for me, but I was there. And about that time, you know, and all this time, you know, I I, I got married. We had my I married uh, uh, a band director, you know, and she was my feeder in in uh, Haines City. My and, wife was my feeder. And a Seminole. Yes, and a Seminole. <laughs> so we, we once we got through the the Florida FSU thing in our household, we we were fine. But and that was another reason that that we were successful. You know, when you can when you can determine your your own destiny by your feeder, and get the best feeder you can get. I mean, that's you know, I and again I didn't set out to marry the best feeder. I just worked out that way yeah. that I could get. But she was at Haines City when I moved to Winter Haven. <clears throat> she you know when the first opportunity for her to come to Winter Haven as my feeder, uh, we she did. We started a family, and as my kids got to an age where I wanted to spend more time with them, I said, you know, I really enjoy the high school thing, but my last year, uh, we had over 380 kids in the band. Yeah. You know, we, it, was, it, was a, it was a pretty um, ma massive program yeah. and, and just time it took to run right. and so forth. And, I, and, and you know, I thought, well, you know, this, it's time for someone else to, to do this, and I'm going to go... I didn't want to leave Winter Haven, so I had an opportunity to go to the feeder for Winter Haven. I said, you know, I think I can do a lot of good here, and I went down there, and I'll tell you what, my, ending up my career as a middle school band director for the last 10 or 12 years, that was the smartest thing I ever did, because that's where I, I, I and, and, I, and again, I have to back up. All this time, when I was at Hawthorne, I was teaching beginning band. I was 7 through 12. I was my own feeder. When I was at Haines City, I, when I went into that job, I was my own feeder. Uh, there were three schools. There was a middle school, junior high, high school. The middle school had no band director. So I, I was the middle school and the high school band director at the same time. So I was basically, again, feeding myself. When I went to Winter Haven, uh, there, was, there was two schools that, that were sixth grade centers that didn't have... Uh, 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 a band, band band program so I, I actually taught sixth grade band in Winter Haven for the first until my wife moved to Winter Haven I said okay this is your job now I feel comfortable turning it over to you and she did and then she she started at Emory so the whole time I was teaching middle school and I really enjoyed that part of my job you know I would look forward to going to to uh, the, the elementary school and the middle school teaching instead of going to a marching band practice at night and I, when I had the opportunity to go to Denison Middle School, which fed Winter Haven, I, I, I took that position and, and finished up my career there. <clears throat> Dave, I'm going to move us a little bit here um, to something I know that's really passionate for you. You know, you talked about your influences by these legendary right. band directors, and, and, and you are that to me, and I, I appreciate that. So my question is, do you have some words of wisdom or advice you would like to pass on to Maybe these future or you, these young band directors. Well, and, and you, you, you don't know, you know, what's going to come of any relationship you have with with anyone. And I didn't go out and search these people out to, you know, I said, oh, I, that's a great band director. I'm going to go hang out with them. I didn't. I just was very, very lucky that it just the circumstances worked out that I just happened to be there at the right time, uh, and. The, and, but then I, I, that's what I thought. But then I learned later on it wasn't. These, these legends, they, they were, were this way for everyone. It wasn't just me. They weren't, they weren't spending time with me and no one else. 
it was like this is what they did they taught others how to teach mm -hmm. and and uh you know that's the thing that i i can't impress upon you know it's not not just not just young not old not experienced not inexperienced but everyone that they 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 can learn something from everyone yeah. and you search these people out if you if, and but if you're if you feel like you have something to offer to someone then you need to be able you you have the responsibility to go to those people and offer what you have and say you know I'm here to help you if you want help I'll be glad to to help you out so in other words take advantage of, of every everything you you can the other thing is you know uh, the music changes the uh, the 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 format changes technology's changing you have to stay in front of everything as much as you can you you have to be able to to um, to to have some kind of uh, uh, awareness of well I you know I can use this this can help me you know and I know there's the the, the programs now are under the gun for a just constantly being assessed for different things. School assessment is such a high priority, and administrations don't want to deal with, with, with band programs. They, that, that, that all they want to do is make sure their school grades high enough. But you have to figure out a way to make that work for you. Mm -hmm. And that's that's just, in other words, just make it work. Just find, you know, don't sit around and complain about it because that ain't going to fix it. But just how can I make this work? And, you know, just find a way. Find a way. Um, I remember one of the things you taught me in, during my internship was, um, you know, great bands play great music. Oh yeah, and that was yeah. and and unfortunately my students hear that you know in speech all the time. So you know my question is, um, what kind of concepts do you have to instill in your students in order for them to achieve quality music? Well, the first the first thing is they they have to be able to um, to produce music mm -hmm. and and obviously the first thing they hear is what they sound like mm -hmm. so so you you got to teach that you get somewhere early on they have to learn how to produce a good tone mm -hmm. whatever the instrument they're playing mm -hmm. you know and then you can you know and only then can you put the music in front of them that they're going to fall in love it with and you know what i noticed was and that when i got excited about a piece of music they did you know if and if if i didn't Get excited about it. They didn't. So I. So consequently, I was. I guess I was selfish in that way. I. I played stuff that I enjoyed. I enjoyed either playing or I enjoyed listening to. I also knew that. Well, we have to play this because it. It's this venue requires we play this. But how can we make that enjoyable? You know, what can we do with with this to you know? Well, maybe instead of playing this, we'll use this piece of music. It'll work. But it's much more enjoyable to play. But uh, quality music is, is so in, so important. And the other thing is, is you have to perform. You have to perform music. Uh, I I see a, when I go into band rooms, I, I say, "What are you working on?" And the band director say, "Da da 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 da." I says, "Good, good, great, man. That's great stuff. What are you performing?" And it's different stuff. They're not they're not performing the same things they're working on. Hmm. Well, we're not we're we're playing da da da. I said, "Well, why don't you perform this?" Hmm. That's too hard for us. Well, you know, well then find something that's that quality, but maybe it's a little more attainable for your for your group. You know, but but yeah, they they working on a piece of music and and I think performance is really really important. I really think you have to perform in front of somebody, even if it's even if it's at a PTA meeting or something like that. But you got to perform it. Um, Dave, you're a really passionate guy. Um, again, I've known you for 23 years, and you've always, every time I, I, I've had conversations with you, you know, you kind of uh, lift me up and inspire me and, and, and kind of teach me to keep doing those things that what you were talking about. Um, but what do you do to keep your edge and your passion flowing? Oh, well, well, I'll give you an example. Last, was it last? Yeah, last year, end of last year, in our district, everyone everyone uh, publishes their their final concert of the year. You know, here's the time and date. Da da da. My wife and I, we in a period of I think about three weeks, we went to 14 performances in our district, wow. different concerts. And and a lot of the times, most of the time, 
you know, we just, no one knew we were coming or anything. We didn't, you know, we just walked in, we listen, we leave, you know, and I, I just wanted, to, we need to know what's going on. Because, you know, you walk into someone's end of the year performance, you pretty much get an idea what the program's doing. And, you know, and we didn't, we did it for, we just needed to know what was going on. So we do that. We stay involved. We, we, we go to everything that we possibly can. We go to the summer, FBA summer convention. We go to FMEA. I haven't taught in nine years, and I have never missed an FMEA convention since 19. My first one I went to was 1971, and I've been to every single one since 1971, either as a student or a director or as a retired band director. I've never missed an FM, at least one day at the F. Now, I don't, I, we, we don't always go for the whole three days, but we'll go over for the day and so forth. I've only missed one FBA summer convention, and that was the summer I got married. You know, so, so and it's and it's was because that's where you know you got to get rejuvenated, and that used to rejuvenate us. You know, we 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 since I retired, my my wife and I, we get to play our horns again. You know, we play in a in a couple different ensembles and 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 do that, so we stay active with that. We go into schools and work with school programs in our area. We still enjoy doing that. I do a lot of adjudicating uh, to. To a lot of parts of the state, and and I, we really enjoy doing that. Hmm. So we we just try to you know, you know what other bands playing nowadays. You know, uh, we go to marching rehearsals at least once a week. We'll just go. Well, let's go down to so and so's rehearsal. Let's go over here. The, you know, we still do that. Hmm. You know, we we're not there for two hours, but but it's nice to drop in with a cup of coffee and stay in for thirty or forty minutes and say, oh, that's interesting. It's like the grandkids. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, or we just go in and listen to a band. We just, oh, you know, I walk in the band room and say, oh, do you want to work with the band? No, I'll just listen. Yeah. You know, and if they ask me something, I'll tell them if they, if, you know, what I think. If they, even if they don't ask me, sometimes I tell them what well, I think. Well, um, tell me about that. Polk County is quite unique in our state. You guys have always had this very strong fellowship. Yeah, um, yeah. And, um, Tell me about the young guys. How, do, how you know? What's their thoughts about it? Do they do they feel that oh you most know here's of, this no, old yeah. timer going to come in and tell me what I well, got to do? Or most of them are are extremely receptive. Matter of fact, some of them are almost. When are you going to come by? When are you going to come by? When are you going to come by? Uh, you know, and some of them are well. I, they some of times they feel well. I can't have anyone in until the band's better or get the band's ready. And and I and we tell them say no no no, R right now. You know, right now is the first, wow, well, this is, it's like only the third week of school. Well, we, you know, you need, we need to see where you are with your beginners if you're a middle school director. I mean, in other words, if you want to wait till your band's uh, really good, then you don't need us. Right. Good enough to bring Joe Krinas in, then why bring Joe Krinas in? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah you know, you, you bring them in to, so you can get better. That's right. And, and, and to show us. That's that's good. And, you know, the other thing is, I sit in summary rehearsals, and I say, "Man, I've never thought about saying that that way." Yeah. You know, and 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 I mean, this is a, maybe a first year teacher will, will will uh, you know, I'll pick up something from them, and and then just share it with others. Yeah. You know, that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and tell me about your colleagues. You know, you you've again you worked with Phil and Jack and oh. Bill Miller and Chuck Fulton. You know, well, those those guys. You know, that's and 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 I can only speak from our area, but we've had so many strong uh, directors come through uh, Polk County. You know, the the amount of of the leadership from Polk County that that has been in the leadership of FBA. I mean, I went to my first FBA meeting in Polk County in 1979. There was there were five former or or current FBA presidents in the room. And three uh, current or former FMEA presidents, not just bad. I mean, these. Guys. Yeah. So I'm, you're sitting in there and you say, "What am I doing with these guys?" And you know, and 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 it stayed like that for the longest time, and and still is. You know, that's we right now. We every month, once a month, every, uh, the retired band directors from Polk County meet for a lunch, hmm. every, and and we just. Just meet and talk about what's going on, and, and stay in touch with them. And we we're we'll have anywhere between nine to twelve band directors 
at these at these luncheons, and and we just we travel around Polk County. We eat at a different place, and someone sets it up, and yeah. we uh, we go there, and it's it's great. We I've, still meet. I've always loved your professionalism, and like you said, you you talked about you know the titles of all these directors and how outstanding they are, but at the same time, you know, you are also at the end of a concert in PA saying, hey, you know, we're all going to have fellowship at my house or a social, you well, know. We, yeah, and, and that was something that, that was, again, was started with, with uh, you know, Tom Bishop and, and those, you know, when he would call me up and say, we're going to go out to this re rehearsal or we're going to do this, you know, or why don't you, you know, after uh, our, our concert MPA, we'd all go over to someone's house and just, yeah. just kind of decompress and, and we would, we would, the, the, the directors who may not it, may not have had as much success as, as others, we would help them out and say, "Well, you know, this is what happened. This is, you know, this this will get better. This is what you need to work on." Yeah. And we, we you know, we, we just kind of take care of each other. Yeah, I think that's it right there. You know, you just said we take care of each other, and um, and I think that's also part of why you guys are so special you know and, and not only as a legacy of these individuals but as a as a collective team really really dave we do have time for a, a story so a short story um i don't know if you want to share something um you such uh, as it could be anything it could be something as a dad it could be something as um a, a, a story that you were talking about roommates with band directors oh you oh could... that that one that one is, is is rather humorous in the sense that we as i mentioned when early on in our careers me and and keith stark and robbie roadman lived in this house in gainesville we taught at three different schools three different high schools and we got into a, a discussion it wasn't an argument a discussion of whose band sight read the worst <laughs> and uh, so we 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 said, well, we're gonna we're gonna see see this, <laughs> you know. We're so we got a piece of music, and a real. Bet this is back before cassettes or CDs. We had a reel to reel tape. So the first band director, I I think I don't know who went first. They took the the tape to their school. The music passed the music out, started the tape, recorded their band playing it, stopped the tape picked up the music, brought it home, the next person took it to their school the next day. We did that for three days. Then we got together on the weekend and said, okay, we're gonna play it one right after the other and see who truly has the worst sight read. I'm not gonna tell you who won, but <laughs> none of them were very good. Are those was, tapes still in circulation? I don't know where that tape is right now. <laughs> they but it had three, and I can't remember the name of the piece, The Tall Pines. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, remember, I still can remember the piece, but it was, you know, and and you know that that ability to console each other when things weren't going good for you, you know, when you've had a, when a parent was was on your case about this, or your your best tuba player moved away, or you know whatever disasters help, you know when you have someone that you can go to and 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 they will tell you, you know this will this will pass, this, things will be better, you know when you have someone around you that can that can tell you that, and, and you know when you think everything is lost. And then you have other people around you say, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be better. That's the other thing, you know, and I've always had that. And I've always had that with my friends, my wife, my family, you know, and everything, you know. Do you have any um, quota statement? Any last, last, anything you want to share um, with us? No, just, just that, uh, I, you know, you don't stop learning. Don't stay involved. Uh, and, and understand that the, the floor band masters may not be the perfect organization but it's it's the only one we have and it's only going to be as good as we make it and we got to make sure that we we continue to we evolve and and change and and service the needs of our constituents and our membership and making sure that you know that the 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 attitude of used to be uh, you know abandoned every school well, that that's we're losing that even we, you know, at one point we, we thought, well, we don't, we need to change that because we have abandoned every school. Well, we not, we don't anymore. So, you know, but we, we just got to make sure we take care of each other and understand that, that it's, it's not a, a punitive organization. 
and so many people look at the Florida BMS as being punitive mm-hmm. when in reality it's there for you it's there to help you yeah well Dave thank you and uh, for sitting with me today and well, you're quite some welcome. Of your stories and um, congratulations on uh, being selected in this legacy project and, oh I appreciate that and, and thank you for all you do I don't know why I'm here but I <laughs> <laughs> you know you know, sometimes I, I get I, I, I say things that I shouldn't sometimes, but you know I think like well, sometimes they just need to be said. Yeah. You know, some, my, some of my younger younger constituents they get upset at me when I say something I, you know, about how their band's playing. You know, but I say it in the sense like you know we can fix this. Yeah. You know we we can we know how to this can be fixed. All right, thank you, Dave.